So you may have seen something called a chromaticity diagram and it has this very strange, horrible triangular shape and you might be thinking what the hell is going on. So in this video I'm going to try and explain the chromaticity diagram um, with reference to the colour wheel and we're also going to take a look at the vector scope in DaVinci Resolve and sort of try and understand what's going on a little bit more. This is sort of a part two video I guess to a previous video that I just made on DaVinci Wide Gamma versus Rec. 709. So we saw in that video how the curves are different in both of those color spaces depending on which one you're working in. And in this video you should be able to tell why that is um, through understanding the chromaticity diagram. So we're going to start with our very humble color wheel that I'm sure all of you have seen before. So this color wheel basically tells you two things about a color. Number one is the hue which is the sort of typical color. That's what we mean when we say red, blue, green, this is hue and saturation. So on the color wheel, the radius, so the distance from the center of the color wheel is gonna tell you how saturated a color is. So at the center we have pure white um, because it's a mixture of all of the colors. And towards the edge we have pure colors. So pure green, pure yellow, pure orange, pure red, etc. And the hue, which is measured in degrees okay is going to tell you which color you're actually looking at so using those two values the hue and the saturation we can identify which color we're we're talking about the thing that this color wheel doesn't tell you about is the lightness of the color so your or the luminance so you you would have heard hsl so hue saturation and luminance so this is only because it's a two dimensional object we don't know about the luminance. So luminance is telling you how close to black the color is. Now we need to talk about the human eye in order to understand why the chromaticity diagram gets this shape. So this is a graph essentially of the sensitivity of the three types of cone cells that the human eye has to different wavelengths of light. So we have three different cone cells which detect color, one for short wavelengths, one for medium wavelengths, and one for long wavelengths of light. So this is why this is why we have RGB colors um, as a standard because we have the three cells that we have are predominantly sensitive to red, green, and blue as opposed to yellow. Like, you know, so we use green instead of yellow um, for this reason. So this graph is essentially a representation of the sensitivity of each of the different cone cells to different wavelengths of light, okay? And when you plot all of the visible colors on the spectrum, you end up with this diagram. So there's a lot of maths behind this. I'm gonna link the Wikipedia page in the description if you're more interested and you wanna do some more reading about the actual derivation. But essentially this is just a representation of all the visible colors to the human eye. And these numbers on the outside are wavelengths in nanometers. So the shortest wavelengths of light that are visible to the human eye around 460 and that corresponds to blue and longer wavelengths correspond to red and this line down here is called the line of purples and the reason there are no markings here is because purple doesn't actually have a set wavelength that is associated with it so you can't produce purple with monochromatic light essentially you have to have a combination of of other wavelengths basically so this is very similar to our color wheel in that we have pure white in the center and you may have heard the term D65 which is um, 6500 Kelvin and that's sort of like a it's basically like a baseline that's said to be pure daylight pure white essentially um, and that's a standard used by many color spaces so why is Da Vinci Wide Gamut so much better for color grading in than Rec. 7 and 9 like I was talking about in my previous video. So if we look at this graph, this is basically showing you a bunch of different examples of color spaces and the triangles that they represent tell you which colors in the chromaticity diagram that are available um, to that color space. So you can see Rec. 7 and 9 covers around 50% of the chromaticity diagram. So it doesn't cover a lot of the green and cyan side. Whereas if we look at DaVinci Wide Gamma, this massive triangle here, it covers so much more 
of the diagram. So these are, remember, these are available colors to the human eye, right? And Rec 7 and 9, you can think about it as a sort of common language between all monitors, phones, TVs. If you have footage in Rec 7 and 9, you can be sure that wherever you're watching this thing, it's going to look the same. Whereas if you're, and it's like standard dynamic range um, compared to Rec 2020, which you can use for high dynamic range, HDR video. And if you have a TV that supports HDR or a monitor that supports HDR, then you can see, literally see these extra colors that you wouldn't be able to see on a monitor that uses Rec 7 and 9. So the reason that we work in a larger color space than Rec 7 and 9 is because you want to work in the widest breadth of colors and dynamic range possible, right? So, so and the reason is that it's going to preserve as much information as possible and then you're going to compress it right at the last minute so that you can send it off to YouTube or you can watch it on any monitor or on any screen or whatever and it's going to look the same. So basically if you think about the chromaticity diagram as a sort of warped color wheel I think that's a good way to look at it. Um, so that's why it has such great utility when we're looking at graphs like this we can find out which color spaces are going to give us the most breadth um, so working in DaVinci wide gamut way 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 better than Rec 7 and 9. So here in DaVinci Resolve you can actually pull up the chromaticity diagram uh, where you have your regular your regular scopes you can you can bring it up right here and I've just pulled up this sort of not color wheel but per se but this this generator that has all of the visible colors and you can see the representation on the chromaticity diagram and if I go over to the vector scope it's kind of this sheet of color right and if I grab my offset and start moving it around you can see what it's doing so the vector scope is essentially a color wheel in that we have red yellow green cyan blue and magenta okay and if I pull up this clip from John Wick you can see how saturated this this image is by the vector scope. So remember that pure white is in the center of the vector scope. So if I go to this grayscale where there's zero saturation, you can see it's just dead in the middle of, of the vector scope. So if I go to this clip, for example, you can see by the qualifier, it's just sat right in the middle, right? Compared to the magenta or the red or the blue, okay? You might also be wondering what these squares are. So they represent 75% and 100% saturation. Click on the three dots and then go to vector scope scale style. You can turn these targets on and off. So if you just wanted the 100% targets, you can do that. Um, but I'm going to keep them both on. So you can see this generator that I've just pulled up from the effects tab in Resolve shows us colors with 70% saturation so you can see them dotting around here in these in these boxes so these are all in the 70 sorry 75% not 70% and these colors are 100% saturated so if i boost the saturation you can see nothing is happening to these two because they're already they're already at 100% okay cool so you can see how the vector scope and the chromaticity diagram are very similar. So because essentially they're showing you where your colors are sitting in your image. But just because the, the chromaticity diagram has a very strange scale and a very strange shape, it's difficult to properly visualize which colors we can see. Um, as opposed to just using the vector scope. I mean, you can you can still use the chromaticity diagram, but all of the changes are going to be a lot harder to read okay um, so yeah I don't know I just thought I thought that I would make a video about the chromaticity diagram because it's baffled me for the longest time why it has such a strange shape and what it's useful for but if you think about it basically as a mathematically accurate color wheel that's sort of what it is but it's this the topic of color science is so so huge I encourage you if you're interested to read about it because I've I'm not covering even a percent of the topic in this video but just thought I would make a quick 
quick short to um to help you guys understand it a bit better i hope you guys found this useful if you have any questions let me know down in the comments and i will see you in the next one